Welcome in to another episode of Betting the Pitch. This is Betting the Pitch number 186. I'm your host, the real underscore G Warner on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere I can make it, I'm there. Um, thank you if you're listening or watching on YouTube. Please hit the subscribe button. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave a five star review. I will read a good one. I got a good one coming up on this episode. Thank you, of course, for all the support. All of you listening, wherever you are, I appreciate it if you're on Twitter. Smash the follow button, the real underscore G Warner. Uh, I'm going to go through, it's late night, per usual, unfortunately, trying to find time to sleep. It just doesn't exist. Uh, I'm going to go through the top five European soccer leagues before we go into the weekend. So uh, hopefully get everything out to everybody before the Friday matches. I mean, before it's even Friday here in the U.S., uh, at least everywhere. It's still, it's it's already Friday morning here in Dallas, Texas, but um, we're going to go through the top five European soccer leagues, English Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, Bundesliga, and Ligue 1 in France. Um, also going to give a um, ultimate best bet, take the top one from each of the leagues, and then come up with a favorite of all. Uh, and then also going to give a pregame.com promo code if you want to save 20%. Um, let me also mention my Patreon subscription, uh, a much better bang for your buck. Um, get access to all my sports um, baseball, soccer, college basketball when it's in season, the NFL, I dabble with a little bit, um, but ultimately get everything there for a much cheaper price. Um, suggest you look into that if you haven't already. Um, but all lines quoted in this podcast are courtesy of betonline.ag, my favorite place to get my bets down early. Reduced juice is offered almost every game you want to bet right up until game time. Please follow the link found in the podcast subscription, fund your account, and use the promo code GW50 to receive a 50% match bonus up to one thousand dollars so um might as well get into this uh we'll start where the money is and that is the english premier league so the first match we'll go through is aston villa hosting newcastle uh this is a saturday morning match aston villa currently a quarter goal underdog at home over under two and a half juice to the under uh villa's been playing great uh ever since unai Emery came in i had a lot of faith in them it looked sketchy shady looked bad at first uh, they're scoring a goal every match, um, and that's going to be a big deal for them, especially with the home crowd in front of them. Newcastle have been playing better of late as well. Um, I still don't believe necessarily in the Newcastle offense. Alexander Isak is a great player, and he's coming into his own. Callum Wilson scoring, but I just don't believe that Newcastle can like really have all of a sudden became this great offensive juggernaut. I still think they're a good defense, so I'm interested in the under as well as Aston Villa getting that quarter of a goal at home. Um, I'm not sure which one I really like best at the moment, but uh, stay tuned. We might see that come up a little bit later in the show. Next match, we got a big window at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, probably 3 p.m. is I'm guessing local time in London or wherever. We'll start in London with the Chelsea hosting Brighton. Currently a pick em, split both ways in juice, minus 108. Over-under is two and a half, slightly juiced the over. Um, I'm very interested in Brighton. I've not done very well in backing them or at least fading them, their offense playing unders this year. I feel like they've been deserved winners, but Brighton puts the ball in the net. Um, uh, my biggest interest, especially because of that pick them split both ways is Brighton under two and a half. Uh, was hoping that I could get Brighton as an underdog, but really wasn't expecting it. And we don't have it now. Southampton then hosts Crystal Palace. Uh, currently Southampton, I pick them right now. More of the juice on Crystal Palace on the road. Over under two and a quarter juice to the under. Uh, strongest lead in this one is under uh, Crystal Palace. I think deserved to be favored on the road. I thought it'd be bigger than than just to pick them uh, with a little more juice. Uh, but I do get that Southampton is usually a good team at home and they are fighting. I mean, both are fighting relegation. Crystal Palace has been doing incredibly well since Roy Hodgson came in. Um, I don't believe in Southampton haven't for this whole season. They're a bottom club for a reason. Um Maybe you get a big result from this weekend, but I still feel like that's likely to go under the total. So I like Crystal Palace under two and a quarter. I'm not buying Crystal Palace's offense, especially not on the road just yet. Tottenham then hosts Bournemouth. Currently Tottenham a one and a quarter goal favorite over under two and three quarters juice to the over. Um, Bournemouth, they're going to go on the road, going to counterattack you. Um, I think that sets up very well for facing a Tottenham side that also wants to do the same exact thing. Uh, I think there's more value in the Bournemouth total uh, under two and three quarters than there is in Bournemouth as a side. But I think I like both of them. Um, and that's generally what I'm looking for right now is to play um, unders 
and underdogs. Uh, if I like them both, that's the biggest thing for me. I think my favorite is when it's a home dog. Uh, don't get that luxury here, but we'll move on to Everton hosting Fulham. Everton currently a quarter goal favorite with all the juice right now at home. Over under two and a quarter, juice the under. Um, Everton are a favorite, I think, because Fulham are treading water right now. They have been falling far off the pace. Um, they were a, a team that looked like they were fighting for Europe. Um, it's gotten pretty bad. Mitrovic got hurt, then came back, got a red card, eight game ban for getting physical with the referee and the team has not really recovered. I still think the Fulham offense or excuse me, defense is good. Um, but when they don't have an offense that makes it even harder, um, thing is this number right now is a quarter of a goal. It looks like it's climbing towards a half based on the juice. Um, I'm most interested, I think in the under here as Everton is a home favorite. I don't believe in them scoring. Um, I still think they're going to try to muck up this game. They don't really change. Sean Dyche knows the way to salvation and that is scoring points um, through winning one nil. And I feel like that fits very well to the under two and a quarter. Uh, I do lean to Fulham, but I feel like their run of form is not good at all. Um, they've not been able to score without Mitrovic, unfortunately. Uh, Solomon's goals have, have dried up because everyone knows all he does is come from the left, go to his right foot, uh, top of the box and scores. Somehow no one figured that out for a few weeks, but um, I think my strongest lean in that one is the Everton under uh, Wolves and host Brentford currently a pick them Wolves, the ton of juice right now, minus 127. looks like that's climbing to a quarter of a goal. And I don't understand that at all. I mean, certainly with an upset win over Chelsea last weekend, but Chelsea are bottom uh, half of the table side right now. So why, why do we care about that? Uh, I lean to under two and a quarter, which is a little bit juiced right now as well. Um, at two, I'm probably not interested. I think Brentford can score goals. I don't think Wolves can. Um, so I like Brentford and under um, waiting for Brentford to hit a quarter. It's not there yet. So I need to mark that down from what I just typed on my other laptop. Uh, anyway, last nightcap on Saturday is Manchester city, a two and a quarter goal favorite to Leicester city over under is three and a half juice the over. Wow. A uh, big number, but it's probably deserved. Um, I'm not getting in the way of Manchester city with a bad team like Leicester who are panicked uh, should never have fired or sacked. Brendan Rodgers, if you waited this long, it doesn't make any sense to me uh, bringing in some random dude. And then maybe it's Jesse Marsh, who is going to be a disaster. Um, I'm glad that Americans getting more shots, but it's going to make and probably set back American football even further. Uh, moving to Sunday, West Ham hosts Arsenal, a one goal underdog at home over and two and a half, juice the over. Um, I don't really see why Arsenal are this big of a favorite, I got to say. So it makes me interested in the, in the plus one at home, though I have been on record plenty, not really being interested in West Ham. I, I, they were a team that I loved backing last season, the season before that. Um, it's not felt that way this time. They were very fortunate today uh, going on the road to to Belgium. Um, they got a very fortunate first goal off. I mean, two big mistakes made by the Ghent keeper and then the Ghent defense, but um, ultimately were outplayed the whole time, try to defend there on the road. Uh, it didn't really look inspired. Um, I don't, think they were really saving up for this match really but um, you could argue that this is far more important that they stay in the premier league as opposed to getting relegated um, and win the conference league and get a berth into europe when you're not even to be in the top division it'd be crazy i kind of hope it happens just for chaos but um, i think my strongest thing in this one is west ham under two and a half because i don't think west ham are likely to contribute problem is arsenal's been scoring a ton we'll see what happens on sunday but that's my lean for now the nightcap on Sunday is Nottingham Forest hosting Manchester United, currently Nottingham Forest, a three-quarter goal underdog at home, over under two and three-quarters, juice the under. Um, Nottingham Forest have been really struggling. They look like a team that, that are going down. It looked like they were starting to play well. Um, finally, their huge acquisition budget had kind of gelled and was playing better. Uh, now, C.B. Cooper might not even make it, who's been a great person for that club. Um, when they start trying to, to fire managers that deserve the job, that's when it starts getting really scary. Manchester United aren't a team I really want to fade right now, so I'm even not, not even going to put it on my list. And the Monday game is Leeds hosting Liverpool. Currently, Leeds a three-quarter goal underdog at home. Over-under is three. Coming off a vicious loss to Crystal Palace. I'm sure that's not good for the mentals. Um, Liverpool, look, they're going to go out and try to score a ton of goals. Um, over is probably the lean in this one. I'm just not really an over player, but... Uh, and and I, I don't really know where Leeds are going to score. I don't really believe in Leeds at all. I, I'd like to be against them, but as a home underdog, that's uh, not my, I'm not into road favorites. Uh, so that's not really my cup of tea um, for my best bet in England. Uh, I'm going to go with, 
I mean, there's a lot of things I like here. I, I feel like uh, Tottenham at two and three quarters feels like too high to me uh, for a total. Uh, also might get three by the time this one kicks off. I doubt it, but that'd be really nice. I'm going to go with the Bournemouth tot- visiting Tottenham under two and three quarters for my best bet for England. And this is the first time I'm looking at these lines with y'all. So um, give me a give me a, a little bit of, of, I don't know, some sort of uh, safe just don't judge me too hard. My first time looking at all these numbers. Um, now I'll move to Spain for Rayo Vallecano hosting Osasuna. Currently Rayo, a, a quarter of a goal favorite with all the juice right now. Over under is two juice to the over. Um, only way I can really look at this is the back Osasuna. Uh, I don't know necessarily that I like them a ton, especially when they have their mind clearly on Copa del Rey at this point in that final with Real Madrid. Uh, over under at two is too low for me. I, I'm trying to get the unders out of my system, especially the twos. It kills me when their goal lists are finished one nil, but I feel like the goal list matches have really been few and far between lately. Um, two teams that don't really have great offenses, but Rio, uh, they want to counterattack you, which does make me want to kind of go the other way. Um, it, they do play well at home. I don't really know why, um, because the counterattack, you'd think you'd want more space, but. Um, I'll lean to Osasuna for now, and we'll see if this total climbs uh, before Friday's match. Moving to Saturday, I like, or we'll just, I don't like anything. We'll start with Villarreal hosting Viola lead. Currently, Villarreal, a one and a quarter goal favorite. Over under is three, just the under. Um, I don't really believe in Villarreal. They've been thrown out in my face, even though I'm holding a ticket on them to finish in the Champions League position. Uh, I don't buy it, but when they beat Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, I mean, I don't really know what I'm, how that happened, especially falling behind twice, but good for them. Uh, by the lead they're uh, they're up and down uh new manager came in uh didn't really get the result they were looking for uh against Mallorca. um it's it's hard because i don't trust Villarreal's offense really but when they put up three on real madrid um that's really hard to to speak to uh, even though real madrid certainly coming off knocking out barcelona and the copa del rey coming from behind that might have affected things but um, I don't know. It's a big number. I'm interested in vital lead. I have been forever. I can't quit them. So I lean to the, uh, the one and a quarter goal underdog on the road and under three, um, probably under three is the, the most reasonable play for me. Uh, athletic club Bilbao, then Jose Real Sociedad in a El Derby Vasco, a Basque country, Basque Derby, uh, should be a big one. And athletic club currently a quarter goal favorite at home over under is two juice to the over. Uh, I'm interested in Real Sociedad getting that quarter of a goal also in the under if it gets higher than two it's not there yet so probably leave that to the side um it's going to be a really tough environment for Real Sociedad I mean that is time on Mace when it, it it's lit normally uh for a random team like right Ryo Vallecano coming in can only imagine what it'll be for Real Sociedad however Real Sociedad are playing better finally got a win got the monkey off their back um they have a lot of creative players that a little club do not um, I think Athletic Club at home are going to want to counterattack, which is not great as a favorite. Uh, I think Sociedad have their eyes set, sights set on finally getting over that Europa League hump and getting into Champions League. I don't know necessarily they'll do it, but I do think that they can go into Athletic Club and win. Um, Sama Mesa is not that tough of a place to play. Ultimately, the results have not been there. So that's my my interest in that one. Real Betis then hosts Espanyol. Hopefully Real Betis don't get two red cards in this matchup. When things go crazy, they go crazy for them. Uh, currently, Betis, a half a goal favorite at home with all the juice. Over-under is two and a quarter, juice to the over. Espanol brought in some random manager, uh, fired, a, sacked a, a good manager they should have kept around. Results weren't there, but they're panicking. Um, that is not something I really want to deal with. Real Betis have Canales suspended. I told Rui Ball for throwing a punch. He's suspended as well, um, probably for a long time. Um, I don't know really what to expect from Betis. I, I don't really think that their offense has been very good. Um, it's been very quiet for a while. Losing to Cadiz at home was terrible, but uh, I guess I'll lean, if anything, to under two and a quarter in that one. Cadiz, speaking of a one goal underdog at home to Real Madrid, nightcap on Saturday, over unders two and three quarters, juiced heavily to the under. Um, I lean under there as well. I think Cadiz, the one goal underdog at home, is not enough for me to play, probably, but it does feel pretty small. So that's kind of respectful of Cadiz and their chances at home. At least the market's saying that uh, Real Madrid are not a team. I'm, I'm that afraid of. Um, they can win games. Of course, they just don't score a ton of goals. They take a lot of their chances late. Maybe that happens here because they're deeper than everyone they play. 
I just don't really buy it. So I'm always leaning to unders against them. Uh, it's not been going great for me lately, though, I'll admit. Girona then hosts LJ in the Sunday match. Uh, Girona, one goal favorite at home over under two and a half, juice of the over. Um, LJ are fighting, but they're so far drift that it's really hard to see what's going to happen. They brought in a manager who's likely going to guide them next year uh, in uh, the Segunda División. Uh, I was going to say La Liga too, but I don't think that's the correct translation. Anyway, um, Elche, I, I don't know. I mean, Girona, they aren't great, but they can beat Elche. Probably a match I should just skip. I'll move on to Hitafe hosting Barcelona. Currently, Hitafe, three quarter goal underdog at home over under two and a quarter juiced to the under. Uh, this one might climb to plus one. Uh, I'll be looking for that if it does, though I don't know that I really want that with Hitafe. Um, I do think that Barcelona is. Uh, pretty much signed, sealed, delivered, won La Liga. Um, it's really hard to, to really know what's happening with them. I think now you focus on who's going to leave the club to try to save their finances and not violate financial fair play or whatever so they can find a way to get Messi back. Um, my strongest lean is under two and a quarter just because Satafe might not even across get across uh, the midfield stripe um, line, whatever. Um, I do think Barcelona's offense has been pretty quiet all season. Uh, I'm not playing the top of it without a plus one. I don't think um, though Barcelona's offense has not been great. I think under two and a quarter is my biggest interest there. Atletico Madrid then hosts Almeria currently Atleti, a one and three quarter goal favorite over under is three. Um, there's a little more juice in the under there, a little more juice on Atletico Madrid at home. Atleti has been playing really well, but geez, that is a gigantic number. Almeria's defense has been really bad away. I don't really expect that to change necessarily, though Atleti are not a team that score a ton of goals. Um, so I lean under three in that one. Uh, it's really nice to have a push on a 3-0 loss. Um, but I think there's a good chance Almeria keeps it closer. The problem is Almeria, if they score, then it's probably going over. Uh, maybe not guaranteed, but probably may, you, maybe you push on three, they lose, they lose two, one. Uh, I think the biggest key here is trying to keep Atleti from scoring and for Almeria not to score if you're playing under a um, lot to ask there, I guess. Valencia then hosts Sevilla currently Valencia, a quarter goal favorite with almost all the juice right now over under is two and a quarter juice to the under um, Sevilla, you know, playing midweek against M Manchester United on the road, not a great situation to come here, but then, I mean, this number is gigantic, as was the number for Valencia on the road last weekend uh, against Girona, I believe. Almeria, excuse me, that's who it was. Um, I don't, Valencia haven't really deserved it. They're fighting relegation, as are Sevilla, two of the biggest clubs. I'm not sure Sevilla has always been that big, but Valencia certainly has. Uh, both struggling, both don't really look good. I like under. I also like Sevilla getting a quarter, which might be two and a half by the time this kicks off. I feel like it's way too high. Um, though Sevilla wants to play offense. So that certainly doesn't, I, I'm trying my best to, to quit some of these unders because these bad beats are insane. We'll get to some of them a little bit later. Uh, Celta Vigo then hosts Mallorca Monday match, uh, Monday night football and Espana uh, Celta, a three quarter goal favorite, all the juice on Mallorca on the road over under is two juice, the under um, I'm interested in my, in Mallorca. I feel like the number is bigger than it should be. Um, but Amariki is just so scary. Uh, Celta Vigo didn't really play that well. Uh, last weekend, but or last Friday, but somehow got a miraculous draw. Um, two is probably too low for me to play under, but I, I do lean to Mallorca again at three quarters of a goal. I don't think it hits plus one, but I'll be very interested if it does. Uh, they're, st they're trying to fight relegation, um, and I think Mallorca, you're going to see great defensive effort here until they're safe. Um, as for my best bet in Spain, Man, it's tough. There's a lot of a lot of good choices out there. I feel like the totals are hot. I mean, Cadiz's total is gigantic. Two and three quarters is, is so big for La Liga, but ultimately Villarreal are at three, and, and so are Atletico Madrid too. So um, I think my favorite, it's a little weird to do this in such a big rivalry matchup. I'm going to go Real Postedad uh, getting a quarter of a goal on the road at Athletic Club, their biggest rival. Uh, I think they go in there and win. It's going to be a really tough environment, tough place to play, but that'll be my best bet for this episode uh, for Spain. Moving to Italy, we have two matches on Friday. Cremonese hosts Empoli, currently Cremonese, a pick em with all the juice right now. over is two and a half, very juicy the under. Um, that seems very disrespectful for Empoli, I got to say. Uh, if, they can, if I can get them as a quarter goal underdog, I want to play that. Um, I also think under two and a half is very, looks very good to me as well. Um, I don't believe in the Cremonese side at all. They've been playing better lately, but also have been 
going deep in the Coppa Italia. They've been playing a lot of matches. I think Empoli a lot better. Um, I don't know if the COVID hit the dressing room. We would have heard about it. So that seems weird to me. Nightcap is Spezia hosting Lazio. Currently Spezia, a three-quarter goal underdog at home. Over-unders, two and a quarter, juice the over. Um, I like the under best, I think, here, two and a quarter. Uh, Spezia, if they hit plus one, I'd like that a little bit more. They're not playing great. Lazio's offense has not been very good, though, and Lazio's defense has been great. So I feel like the home dog that... I think could hang around also a road team that doesn't really score a ton coming off an emotional victory, finally beating Juventus. A lot is adding up and pointing towards Lazio under two and a quarter uh, for Saturday. We have Bologna host AC Milan currently Bologna, a quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice over under is two very juice to the over. Um, I think Bologna, I mean, AC Milan coming off champions league midweek. That's a big deal. Uh, Bologna getting a quarter of a goal. It's very juice. That's my biggest interest right now. I like it more than an under two. Cause I'm trying to, quit those uh napoli then hosts verona currently napoli a one goal favorite over unders two and a half juice the under uh, probably the worst beat that i had last week but there's so many it's really hard to count uh verona trailing the whole match never ha- leading until the last minute of extra time when the sassuolo keeper kicked the ball right to a defend to a, a an attacker excuse me um for verona who scored a goal from like midfield to win right at the, the death, essentially, uh, vomit inducing. I'm nauseous talking about it as we speak, but thank you all for joining me and listening to me and letting me, letting me, uh, vent, uh, Napoli have not been playing well. They've been dealing with a ton of injuries. If Osimhen was anywhere near healthy, they've essentially won Serie A. So he would have been back and playing, uh, in the midweek against Milan wasn't there. Gives me some interest in Verona, but I think they have big problems. Um, and I'm not going to overreact to playing well, I guess, if anything, I lean to under two and a two and a half, but yikes. Uh, I don't, I don't want to lose another way on Verona after last week when it was a guaranteed win the whole time. Inter Milan then hosts Monza in the nightcap. Uh, Inter has been playing so poorly and come off champions league midweek. Uh, currently a one and a quarter goal favorite. Where does that come from? Yikes. Uh, over under is two and three quarters, juiced heavily to the under all the juices there right now. Most of slash all the juice is on Monza as well. Um, Monza have not been playing as well. They're still a team that wants to attack, and that does leave them up to open for some issues for Inter, but Inter have not been winning, beating anybody in, in this league. They haven't been scoring goals. It's really hard to see them scoring here, um, even against the Monza side that might be a little bit more uh, naive than you think they should be. I lean to Monza and to the under. Uh, Lecce then hosts Sampdoria on Sunday. Lecce, a half a goal favorite, which is pretty big uh, for Lecce to give anybody uh, Sampdoria have been so bad. That's really, I guess, not that surprising. Uh, Lean to Sampdoria getting half of a goal, but I don't really want to back them, I got to say, um, even though they came off a really big result last weekend. Torino then hosts Solonatana. Currently, Torino, a three-quarter goal favorite. Uh, more juice on Solonatana on the road. Over-under is two and a quarter. Very juice the under. Um, Torino can't score goals. Neither can Solonatana. So that's certainly points you to an under, or at least points me to an under. Um, I don't know that I trust Lernatana so much. Uh, they're trying to score goals, but they've had real trouble since the international break um, to put anything near the net. So, uh, and Torino, that's their thing. They always play such beautiful football. Maybe this is the time they finally score. I just don't really trust it. Sassuolo then hosts Juventus, currently Sassuolo, a half a goal underdog at home, uh, coming off a really disappointing performance that was really good. And then to take nothing from a, a trip to Verona, they're pretty safe though. So they don't have a lot to worry about. I lean to Sassuolo getting a half of a goal because, I mean, they've been playing great, barring that ridiculous collapse late. Um, I thought Juve, I mean, Juve played today, and so that's going to impact their legs. They clearly care about the Europa League more than they do care about Serie A because of that 15-point penalty. Um, We'll see if that sticks. I guess I have some interest in the under two and a half as well, but it's very juiced at the moment, and Sassuolo is not exactly an under team. So I probably should just strike that from my list. So I'm, I'll go Sassuolo plus a half of a goal is uh, my biggest interest in that one. Want to see lineups and see who Juve is throwing out there, though. Roma then hosts Udinese in the nightcap on Sunday. Roma a half a goal favorite with almost all the juice over under two and a quarter juice the under. Uh, it's been really hard to score against Roma. They had to play, got the early match in, but they had to play in the Europa League today. As That's not great for them. Bouncing back really quickly. Uh, I don't think I'm as interested in Udinese getting half of a goal on the road, though I think they can compete here. I like under two and a quarter or more. And moving to Monday, Fiorentina hosts Atalanta. Currently Fiorentina, a th- quarter goal favorite at home. All the juice on Atalanta on the road. Over-under is two and a half. Uh, a little more juice on the over. I'm never really interested in backing Atalanta as 
or backing unders on Atalanta. I do like them getting a quarter of a goal from what could be a very tired Fiorentina coming off uh, conference play this week, conference league play. Um, I don't know necessarily that I'm uh, in love with Atalanta and how they've been playing. It's been kind of a lost season for them, but not playing in Europe has certainly added their performance levels and they're trying to get into some European qual competition uh, coming up. We'll see how that goes. I'm not sure necessarily where they end up, where the, where they will end up finishing. Um, but you know, I, I am somewhat interested in seeing what they do uh, for my best bet for Syria and Italy for this weekend. I'm going to go with Udinese under two and a quarter visiting uh, actually scratch that. Uh, mm, 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 yeah, scratch that. I'm going to go. I think it's easier path of least resistance Salernitana under two and a quarter. Uh, I'm sorry to do that. That's what I should have said, but I clicked the wrong one. Uh, Salernitana under two and a quarter visiting Torino, two teams that can't score. Uh, I like that. Those odds for, for an under uh, now move to the Bundesliga and we'll go to Schalke Nolfia hosting at the Berlin a uh, big, big battle at the bottom um, relegation fight, six pointer for sure. Uh, Schalke, a quarter goal favorite at home right now, over under two and a quarter juice the over. Um, Erthra are just not really a team I'm backing at this point. Um, unders are really scary to back with them as well, but I don't really think that Schalke are a threat to score. I don't think Erthra are either really. So uh, that kind of points pretty aggressively to under two and a quarter. Um, might climb to two and a half on them time this kicks off. I doubt it. Should be a fight. Um, big red card risk, probably. Two teams really scrapping to try to get a win. Uh, a drop is probably good enough for both. They're probably going to be very conservative late if that's going to happen. Um, of course, both want to win. Uh, I think one goal probably will get this one done, though, and that makes Under look very interesting. Moving to Saturday, Colin hosting Mines, no Uh Worst, probably the, I don't know if it's a worst bad beat, probably not as bad as Sassuolo, but uh nil nil in the 85th minute ending two two when i under two and three quarter it just made me want to jump off a building but um colin currently a pick a little bit more juice right now over there's two and a half uh juice pretty heavily to the under uh colin have not been scoring don't really trust them too i'm interested in mines if they move to an underdog just because i don't think colin are, are very good but it's not there yet so i think my strongest lean will be the under two and a half um but god i really hope i don't play that byron munchen then host hoffenheim uh Team trying to win the league, team trying to stay in the league. Bayern, a two and a quarter goal favorite. Overner is four. Gigantic. I feel like the push on four is, is massive, but uh, ultimately, I'm probably going to stay clear for that one. RB Leipzig then hosts football club Augsburg, currently Leipzig, a one and three quarter goal favorite. Overner is three and a quarter, juice the under. Uh, I lean to under. I'm I'm just quitting Augsburg matches. They are just so embarrassing. And uh, when they're even in good positions, they fall asleep and don't cover corner kicks or do ridiculous things or their goalkeeper just goes out and flaps at a ball and completely misses it, leaving an open net. It's just like the hits keep on coming. I'm sick of losing money on them. So uh, they're going to, t- to a place that probably gets them crushed. Uh, and I hope that happens. BFA Stuttgart then hosts Borussia Dortmund. Currently Stuttgart, only a half a goal underdog at home over under two and three quarters, juice the over. Um, the Bruno Labadia experiment finally ended. I mean, they're, this club is brain dead uh, for one of the biggest clubs no wonder they were playing in the Schweizer Liga last season or two seasons ago or whenever it was um, they have no clue what they're doing and boosted Altman, um, their defense has been better but it's not been great lately their totals have been higher lately as well um, I don't really have any interest in Stuttgart I don't have any interest in over either uh, the nightcap the uh, Spiel Tatna Spiel Tag is the week, whatever. I'm not going to try to speak German. It's 1243 here, local time. Uh, I tried to find a three quarter goal favorite to Bush so much Gladbach. Uh, over under is two and three quarters juice to the over. I tried to find foot. It's a big number for them to lay, but Gladbach have been so bad at the road. I don't really think I want to have anything to do with the under here either. Not a lot coming up uh, in the Bundesliga here, um, though it probably deserved that. I think I had an O for last season, last week, um, at least on Saturday. I think I did. Um, <clears throat> Moving to Sunday, Werder Bremen hosts at Sports Club Freiburg. Uh, currently, Werder Bremen, a pick em with more of the juice on Freiburg on the road. Werder Bremen are a team I want to go against. I mean, incredible for them to uh, really fall behind twice in, from the 85th minute on and somehow get a point. Um, I don't want to get talk about that match anymore. Over under is two and a half, juice the over. Um, Freiburg have not been scoring. That's the biggest question for them. Uh, I think both these teams really struggle to score. So I like, I like under two and a half as my strongest lean. 
I'm hoping Freiburg close an underdog, but I don't think that'll happen. Uh, I probably won't play it until then. Next, we'll move to Union Berlin, host Bafel Bochum, currently Union, a one goal favorite. All the juice on Bochum on the road. Over under is two and a quarter juice to the over. Um, I don't know who's backing Union to a one goal favorite. They've not been scoring at all. Uh, I don't know who's backing the over to two and a quarter and looking like it might hit two and a half. Who's where's that coming from? I mean, these Bundesliga totals have been gigantic, and some of them have gone over in ridiculous fashion. Like I just said, I'm trying not to talk about this match anymore. I promise. Um, but I like Bolcom. I like under. Um, and that's probably going to be where my best bet comes from. Not to spoil the surprise, but there's only one match left, and that's Waffel Wolfsburg hosting Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, currently Wolfsburg at Pickham, but all the juice in Leverkusen on the road over under two and three quarters, and it's juice slightly to the under. Um, I'm not interested in fading by our Leverkusen. Yes, they came off uh, Europa League midweek uh, today, and that's going to be a quick turnaround for them to the last match of the weekend on Sunday. Uh, but Volsworth not scoring a lot. I do think that they're going to try to take advantage of the tired legs, but Leverkusen just seemed to be the energizer bunny out there. Um, they have been playing great. They've been beating everybody. They're trying to fight their way in the Champions League. I don't really think there's much for me to do there. So uh, for my best bet for Germany, we're almost done. Going to go through France, then uh, give some promo codes. Then get through and do uh, Lee. Uh, um, sorry, do the ultimate best bet. What am I talking about? Uh, we're about to move to Lee uh, now, but I'll go Bulkum under two and a quarter as my best bet for Germany. Okay. Last but not least, we'll go through Lee uh, in France. We do have a Friday match. It's, it's Toulouse hosting Lyon. Currently, Toulouse, a quarter goal underdog at home. And I can already tell you, I was already ready to type that. Uh, as an interest for me, uh, Lyon are just, I mean, they had a huge comeback against Saverne after a nothing first half. I don't think they can get away with that on the road against Toulouse. Uh, Toulouse is a pretty good team, uh, league to champions from last year that have been competitive Had a good win at Montpellier last weekend. Uh, I like them as a home dog getting a quarter of a goal. Saverne then hosts Stav de Rems, uh, currently Ren, a Rene, it's, they sound the same. So I'll say Rene, um, they're a quarter goal favorite at home over under two and a half juice to the over. Uh, Ren have been playing so poorly. They've been Jekyll and Hyde home versus away. Um, they've got a really easy run in towards the end of the season. This might be the last tough match that they have. They're fighting. And right now with that, I mean, with a one nil lead at halftime and dominating Lyon should have had a bigger lead and should have gotten back into the European positions, but they had an awful second half. A uh, young team on the road shouldn't be shocked by that, considering how poorly they've done on the road. Stad Rems or uh, the the Champagne Region team uh, with Will still as a manager. I mean, they've been awesome. Um, he's been great. I think they've. I think he's still unbeaten on the road uh, with one defeat at home. Um, but I, I lean to Rems. I don't know necessarily that the home field really matters so much for Ren. I don't really think they're that good. Um, I do have a, a ticket on them to finish in the European position, which looks so good early in the year and has really fallen off a cliff since then. I lean to under two and a half there as well. PSG then hosts Lons, currently PSG a three quarter goal favorite, all, all the juice almost over under is three, slightly juice to the under. Uh, I'm interested in Lons, but I want to see them hit plus one before I get involved. Um, I, I'm still looking to fade PSG as I don't think they really care about this league at all. Lille hosts Montpellier, the early one on Sunday. Lille, one goal favorite with almost all the juice right now over under is three, juice to the under. Um, weird to see the juice to the under here, I got to say. I lean over there, if anything, but I don't like that push on three. Maybe we'll see a two and three quarters before this kicks off. Montpellier, Montpellier have been playing better. Uh, still don't really trust their defense, though. Um, I feel like they can score on Leo. Leo have been very fortunate and their goals have not really been deserved. It's kind of a weird position to be in. I think if anything, I like over three in that one. Uh, I know pinch me, pinch yourself. It's rare for, rare for me to say that. Sabre Stois then hosts Olympic Gym- Gymnastique Coupe de Nice. Uh, currently Brest, a quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice over under two and a quarter. Uh, split juice is minus 110 both ways. Nice had to play in the uh, conference league this, this week. So we'll see what that does. To their lineup. They're still fighting for Europe, but they're a little bit of ways out. Um, lean to Brest getting a quarter of a goal at home, but I don't know that I love it. I'll put it that way. Um, I guess I'd lean to under if anything, but Nice have been so good offensively. Uh, I guess, I guess I still lean to under there, but it's not as strong of a lean. Clermont foot half goal favorite to Angers. Uh, very juiced right now. Clermont foot are maybe climbing to three quarters of a goal over unders two and a half. All J have been a disaster. Uh, thought they might get relegated last year, but lo and behold, just one year too early. 
Um, they've been playing well, though. Got a draw and a win from Nice and Lille, their last two matches, uh, respectively. And uh, I don't know if they had a win since September. Uh, I don't know if they got four points in two matches. Uh, literally, they, they might have had four points the rest of the season. Um, that makes me lean to them. I, I mean, sicko mode for sure. Uh, might see three quarters of a goal before this kicks off. And I definitely lean to under two and a half because I don't think either of these teams have much of an offense. Clermont Foot trying to stay in the league, but they're in trouble right now as well. Alger hosts Nalt, currently Alger, a quarter goal favorite at home over under two, juice the over. Um, lean to Nalt, getting that quarter of a goal and uh, under two and a quarter. Hopefully it gets there. It's not there yet. Alger have been doing really well climbing up the table by being defensive and not conceding goals. Um, I think under is probably my stronger lean, but I don't have that two and a quarter yet. So I lean to Nolk in that quarter. Uh, Wrestling Club de Strasbourg hosts Ajaccio. Currently Strasbourg, a three-quarter goal favorite. All the juice on Ajaccio on the road. Over-under is two, juice the over. Not a lot for me to do there. I don't really want to back Ajaccio, I'll say that. And Strasbourg does have an offense, though it has not done much this season. Monaco then hosts Lorient. Currently Monaco, a half a goal favorite or excuse me, a goal and a half favorite over under three and a quarter juice, the under a lot of juice on Lorient on the road. Uh, I'm still a believer in Lorient. Maybe I'm the only one it's been all season. Um, I'm not changing. I do feel like this might be the first time in a while. I don't back Lorient though, because going on the road to Monaco, I know they can score goals. Lorient going to have to keep up. That's gonna be tough. I do think they're going to keep Monaco out as long as possible, but I'm not sure when that happens. And unfortunately that second goal is a lot easier than the first. Still like Lorient getting goal in half though. Cause I think they're a good team. Last but not least, Marseille host Tua. Uh, currently Marseille, a two goal favorite. Most of the juice or almost all of it on Tua on the road over under three and a quarter juice. The under uh, Tua's defense is bad. They're going to a tough place to play in Marseille. Two goals is gigantic considering Mar- Marseille have been playing, but I'm not sure that I really, um, I don't know. I just, I don't really want to lose money in that, in that matchup. I'll put it that way. I think we're a best bet for Liga uh, before we get to the ultimate best bet and get through everything else. I'll give you Angers under two and a half. I think that's, They've been playing well. I mean, huge turnaround in form. Four points in two weeks is like gigantic for them. Um, at this rate, they might stay up. Just kidding. Not likely to happen. But I think Claremont Foot are a really unlikely to t- team that's unlikely to score. Um, two penalties in the second half. The last time I faded them at home. Um, don't think that'll happen again. Or you might just see me never make this podcast again. Um, so now it's time to go through and and point out the, uh, the ultimate best bet. Um Give me one second because I got to get through the business that we got here. Uh, first, I want to plug the Patreon account. Um, telling you worth it. Take a look. Uh, get my baseball, soccer stuff right now at this point in the season, this point in the year. Uh, that'll be available for you every night. Um, also, you get everything. Uh, one stop shop. Um, get notifications when new things come out. Uh, stuff that's added during the day. Um, so keep that in mind. Think it'll be worth it. You will be glad you did as a old promo if you know what that was. Uh, let me know. I'll read a, a great uh, five-star review from Mortal Locks. Appreciate this on Apple Podcasts. Please, people keep doing this. I really appreciate it. It's good for getting me up in the, uh, hopefully get more interaction as that's my eventual goal. Uh, been following Griffin in multiple sports for 1.5 years now, uh, one and a half years now. Griffin is a great field for the top soccer leagues. He put the work in while researching and reviewing tapes of games. Very smart, calculated plays that will, that will win you money over the time. Thank you so much, Mortal Locks. I appreciate that. Um, if you want to write me up on other places, I will read your stuff out there too. Got a question, fire it my way. Um, happy to give you any sort of the, the, the pleasure that you give me for this or whatever. That's probably not the right word to use. It's late, my bad. Uh, but thank you for the support and, uh, anything you got to want me to cover, send it through the DMS. I'll go on Patreon about it or on the next podcast, wherever you want, just say something, I'll do it. Um, as for pregame.com, a uh, lot of great handicappers on there. If you're into buying picks, um, Got the twenty percent off. Got League Twenty L E A G U E Twenty, not League like League in France, but League L E A G U E Twenty. Twenty percent off for all listeners of the Soccer Podcast. Good for seven days from podcast release. Good until the twenty first of April, um, but you don't want April the events of four twenty to throw you off. So uh, get in there now. Use the promo code League Twenty, um, spell it like you do in America. L E A G U E Twenty. Get twenty percent off. Anyone on there might. MLB podcast co-host uh, Scott Seidenberg got stuff coming out. Got my stuff, of course. Uh, AJ Hoffman, my college basketball host. I'm sure it's giving you all the stuff if you like UFC and you like seeing people break each other's arms. Um, that's what you're into. Um, no shame. Do your thing. You can win money at that, and AJ will certainly help you out. Um, 
And from there, uh, if you're on YouTube, please hit subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, like my guy, Mortal Locks, feel free to throw a comment in and I will read it on the next podcast. Even if you want to hate on me, I can. I mean, I don't want that, but if you want to, uh, if that makes you feel good, uh, I'll read it. So, I mean, blow, put me on blast if you want to. Whatever you, whatever you feel, I'm happy. Uh, just really trying to get as many reviews on there as possible. Um and assuming I'm not forgetting anything else, I think it's time for the ultimate best bet. This is the, let me see, make sure I hit this button right. This is the real underscore G Warner on Instagram and Twitter. This is the ultimate best bet um, that I do every week for you coming over the top five European soccer leagues and my favorite bets from each. Uh, from the English Premier League, I'll go Bournemouth under two and three quarter goals. From La Liga, I'll go Real Sociedad, a quarter goal underdog on the road at Athletic Club. Uh, Salernitana, a two and a quarter goal underdog, or uh, under two and a quarter for Salernitana in Serie A, under two and a quarter in Bochum, uh, in the German Bundesliga, and last but not least, under two and a half in Angers. Um, for my ultimate best bet for this episode, I'm going Bochum under two and a quarter in the German Bundesliga on the road at Union Berlin. They're on the road against a team that doesn't really want the ball, that doesn't score a lot of goals, that really, I don't know where two and a quarter comes from. I feel like two should be the number. And we might get two and a half before this kicked off. Uh, go under two and a quarter at the VFL Bochum. Um, get you done. Might see a goalless draw. And that's a perfect type of match for any under or any underdog. And that'll do it for this episode of Betting the Pitch. Thank you for the support. Um, if you're watching late night, God bless you. Uh, I hope you sleep well. Because I'm going to try to do that too. Um, God, I just freaked out that I closed everything off. I don't think I did. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Stick with me. We got... Um, whatever midweek soccer, whether it's Champions League or whatever coming up next, um, will be there. Of course, Major League Baseball stuff just came out. Join the Patreon, I'm telling you it's worth it. Far, far better deal than you'll see on pregame. But if you like pregame as well, stay there too. Uh, and use the promo code League20, L E A G U E 20 for 20% off any of your picks that you want to purchase on there. And that'll do it. I'm going to stop rambling. Good night. Talk to you all soon.